No? So, uh, Arlo or Amanda Anthony G. Mendoza is my, is my colleague at the Filipino Department at the University of the Philippines. Uh, uh, Tabag will read excerpts from his story, Voice Tape. Uh, the title is a reference to cassette tapes for OFWs or overseas Filipino workers record their experiences like some sort of diary through this narrative device as explicated in the intro, which is uh, accessible online. The notorious labor export policy is tackled, something which remains a problem until now as our government consider trading our nurses in exchange for vaccines. Anyway, this, uh, the story is, uh, you know, as mentioned, translated from Ilocano to English now. And uh, now we can try to uh, play or listen to Tabag's uh, yeah. reading, some sort of a digital voice tape. So let's try to play the clip. Thank yeah, you. I'll play the file now. Thank you, Tilde. I'll, I'll play the file now. Okay. Voice of Ilocano, so... Hi, John. I think uh, you need to uh, share the screen again. Okay, can you all see the screen? Yes. Okay, I'll share it now. Can you see um, the video? Yes, but we can't hear it yet. Locano is the native language. Can you hear it now? Locano, so yes. comprise more or less 10% of the 110 million total population of the Philippines. Uh, it belongs to the Astronesian family of languages and is the third most spoken native language in the country. According to Ethnologue Languages of the World, the Ilocano language is spoken in Northwest Luzon, the Babuyan Islands, the Cordillera Administrative Region, the Cagayan Valley Region, northern parts of Central Luzon, Mindoro, and scattered areas in Mindanao. The language is also spoken in the United States with Hawaii and California having the largest number of speakers. Ilocano is considered as lingua franca of northern Philippines. According to Carl Rubino in his Ilocano Dictionary and Grammar, Ilocano is spoken as a secondary language by more than 2 million people who are native speakers of Ibanag, Ibatan, and other languages in northern Philippines. Since the publication of the epic Biag Nilamang in the Ilocano magazine of Isabelo de los Reyes in the late 1800s, Ilocano authors have published Ilocano novels in the early 1900s. Banawag Magazine and Gumil Filipinas, the Ilocano Writers Group, helped in the development of the language. Since 1934, Banawag Magazine has been publishing Ilocano writings, while Gumil Filipinas since the 1960s has published books and held workshops and trainings for Ilocano teachers and the youth who would eventually become writers themselves. Ilocano language has managed to create its own path and be dynamic, continuously aspiring for its state as an intellectualized language, consummating its being a language of knowledge and wisdom. Okay, so I'm going to play the, the excerpt now. Talaga sana nakaawid, tipagat ng gilato. Dahil itinda mo, nagrusingan, tibusor ko iti abroad abroad. Ang yakit din na patig da ita kwarta da di man laumay da ito itanawa nila kay na. Siyempre, diyak maamiris tirikot ti kasasad da ito itaman ang laabulan na iti Abu Dhabi. Iti rabi isakbay ti pumpon na pagnunumuan nga gyan ti dua kakasinsin mi iti balay. Sa ti dua, ito yung na kaikamangan ni Angkel. Nimat Angkel Mulong tagyan pailayang iti balay da Angkel Ato. Idi may ruwar ti Lungon, na yun na ti ayan ti saka. Idi marigatan da ang mangiruwar iti tawa at adimot anya adakkel at anang ipukkaw adikan pa'y kayat ni angkel ti pumanaw. Talaga kayat na ayuray da kayo at anang itanabutog iti likudak. Ngurungurin nyo nga minin tamanok 
at na nangyong pagkaw. Maiwayat ka no dito itap na awanin ti sumaruno ken kuha na amarsing iti pamilya. Alaman ko mga po, kinunak ngayon daw dawat. Minurungur da ti kawitan at darisayan ket nagwarasiwis ti dara da ito'y anakaparparsyakan ti lungon ken bado ti sumagmamano ang nagbagkat. Sa pastalatan inibatan da ket pila nagturturungan ti naputulan ang manok. Ngayon di dalata mayroar ti lungon. Uray ti ridaw na ilet. Awan nagyan ti lungon idinseret da iso ang nalabit pinagtingig da. Nagangayan na Rinugusan da ti tawa. Daydi ti damo akagat ti panagrakaya at ti balay ng kilato. Ta'y dinagyan ng kilmulong, di naman ten ti narimaan ti tawa. Sa idisimang pat ti bakat ng kilato, nagyan damit iti pamilya da ito'y. Aging gang ang ininot latan ang narigrignas ti basit a balay ni ang kilato. Okay, thank you. Thank you, John, for uh, playing Ariel's reading. So now I'm going to read uh, same, uh, the English translation of the same excerpt. Uh, Uncle Ato's wife wasn't able to come back to the country for the burial. This really irked me. It made me loathe people who, ch who chose and choose to work abroad, away from their families. Is money really that important that one can forgo the burial of a loved one? of her own husband. Of course, back then, I didn't fully understand the difficulty of her situation in Abu Dhabi. The night before Uncle Ato's burial, our relatives decided that our two cousins, the children of Uncle Ato, would live with us. The other two, since there were four of them, would live with Uncle Ato's mother-in-law. Uncle Mulong, on the other hand, would be the one who lived and watch over Uncle Ato's house while the latter's wife was away. The people from the funeral parlor had a hard time carrying Uncle Ato's coffin out of the house. While they were having a hard time smuggling the coffin past the window, someone blurted out a joke about Uncle Ato not wanting to leave this world. He's waiting for something, shouted someone from the back. Behead the chicken, another one screamed. They had to do it so that there would be no consecutive deaths in the family. In my mind, I was asking the Lord to make the ritual work. I didn't want anyone from my family to bid us farewell without us being ready. The rooster was then completely beheaded. Its blood spurted onto the coffin and the clothes of the pallbearers. The head of the rooster fell off the ground, lifeless, writhing for a few seconds until it became one with the earth. A few weeks after Uncle Atos death, his house also started deteriorating. The first to see signs of decline were the windows. Because Uncle Mulong didn't exert any effort to maintain the house when we lived there, he did not once try to repair the windows. Meanwhile, when Uncle Ato's wife came back to the Philippines for a visit, she stayed in her mother's home. The die had been cast. All that was needed was to wait for Uncle Ato's house to, to completely fall into shambles. Uh, as translator, I was also uh, asked uh, to speak about one translation uh, decision uh, that I did with the uh, stories that I translated, Roy's and uh, Arian. So I'll make it uh, brief so that uh, other editors can also share theirs. So uh, for uh, Ariel's uh, story, for instance, I elected, since his story was not in controversial form wise, what I did was to omit certain uh, parts uh, in order for the narration uh, to flow in a better manner or to flow smoothly. Uh, aside from that, uh, I also had to stop myself from uh, inserting footnotes because the story, as you might have noticed, had a lot of pop cultural references and a lot of um, a lot of organizations and groups uh, were also invoked uh, in the organization. I, I always thought that uh, for a foreign reader or at least a reader that uh, who is unfamiliar with Philippine literature, having to wade through those uh, footnotes would be a tall task in itself. So I elected to omit those. Uh, I, at least I stopped myself from doing those things. So I think I think that's it. Uh, the next, I think the next pair of readers should, should take the floor. Thank you.
we can all uh, unmute ourselves and give uh, you know the the writer and the translator an applause after each pair. So feel free to do that. All right, unmute yourself and clap because it's so weird mm -hmm. after you have spoken, all right, to be met to with complete yeah. silence. <laughs> so please do that. <laughs> thank you so much, Ariel, and thank you so much, Charlo. And I believe uh, Daryl is uh, up next to introduce the next pair. I am indeed. Thank you so much. And um, hello again. I'm very, very pleased um, to introduce two of um, my most admired um, writers and cultural workers, um, critics, uh, and teachers. Um, so uh, the first one I'd, I'd like to introduce is Merlia Lunan. So um, you will meet Merlia Lunan at least a few more times in this uh, short session. Merlia Lunan is a um, poet, a fictionist, a critic, a teacher, an anthologist herself, a translator, and a cultural worker. She writes in multiple languages, multiple Visayan and, and Mindanao languages. And, um, and we're just very, very fortunate that you know, she agreed to work with us on this book. And um, I'm also particularly pleased uh, to share with you that um, this is, uh, as um, Christine mentioned, a sort of a reunion because the, the writer I'm going to introduce, John Eremil Teodoro, uh, is someone I met in a, uh, in a residency um, more than a decade ago, and it was a residency, a fellowship of writers from the South or the, the Central and, and the Southern part of the Philippines, and it was a, 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 a gathering that was organized by Merle Aluna. So it, it, it's really wonderful to see, you know, to see these writers are working together in, in this book. And thank you again, Gladi Boy, um, for allowing us to do that. So um, Gianni Ramil Teodoro is also a multilingual writer. He's, he hails from Antique, but he's been based in Manila for a long time. He teaches in the De La Salle uh, University and is also secretary general of the Writers' Union um, of the Philippines. So um, I'm, I'm really happy that uh, he agreed for us to include one of his works. And um, I'm, I won't take any more time and um, let them read uh, both the John and her. Thank you. Thank you, Daryl. No, thank you, everyone. Um, uh, good evening, New York, and good morning, Philippines. No, so uh, I'll be speaking about uh, Kinaraya, no, and then I will read an excerpt, no, from my short story. Uh, Kinaraya. Kinaraya is the language brought by Malay people from the island of Borneo to the island of Anipay at the center of the Philippine archipelago. This island is named by its Aita settlers after a triangular-shaped seashell abundant on the shores and was renamed by these Malay settlers as Majaas after the name of the mythical mountain abode of their god Purulakau. Later, the Spanish colonizers baptized this island as Panay, meaning there is food, for rice and fish is abundant in this island. The Malay settlers of Panay are people who are at home at the sea, at home where they are free. According to folk history, these people were fleeing the domain of a cruel sultan or a local king. They crossed the Sulu Sea to look for a land where they could live peacefully. Hinaraya is the language of the seashore, the language of Hinilawud, or a language spoken downstream to the direction of the sea. Due to European colonization, the bearers of this language went up to the mountains of central Panay, and so it became Hiniraya, a language spoken upstream or to the direction of the mountains. Hiniraya is one of the oldest languages of the Philippine archipelago. It is a language of Malayo-Polynesian origin. Its beauty is in the sound of its R's and the swa. It is a language forged by strong winds of the typhoons and the roaring of the monsoons. It is the language of my blood, the language of my foreparents in Panay. My Kinaraya is the language of ordinary fisher folks and farmers in the village by the sea where I grew up. Its ancient version is the language of the great Panay Bukidnon's 13 volume epics, the Sugidanon. These are stories in verse transferred from tongue to tongue of the respected binukot or kept women tasked to be the culture bearer of the Karaya people. 
Hinaray is the language residing in my liver. It is the language for a curse and dream. Whenever I speak or write in this language of my elders, I am reconnected to the noble heritage of the powerful Babaylans, the healer and the spiritual leader of the ancient barangays. Hinaray is the language of the chirping of the birds, the gurgling of the brooks, the rushing of the waves on the seashore, the rustling of the coconut fronds, the curdling and boiling of the blood, the murmur of the heart called kasing kasing. It is the only language that my inner ear could hear, the only language that my soul could understand. It is my window to the world. The contemporary Kinaraya is so Hispanized that today we call our hearts corazón. The R's are still there, and the swas are chewable in, in the mandible and crunchy to the ear as ever. So let me now read one excerpt from my short story. Kung andat wara na gay home celebrating agi. Nagaraha kang pansit molo sa kusina kang napatyan sa diverting agi, kag Dilma, kang makabati sanda, kang ginaldo sa gwa. Abaw junior, wala rin si tatay mo. Limog ni Nay Gloria nga nagapanambiton. Ay, si junior dyan rin, singgit ni Vilma, daratindog. Ginboyan ka dyan ang ginakihad ng mga sibuyas. Nabilin sa kusina si Berting, nagpungkuta na kaginsubli ang pagkihad ka mga sibuyas. Gusto na magdalagan pagwa para makita si Junior, pero daw nagbugat ang anang mga kahig. Din pa namdam na nga, maano man abitan na kung makita na si Junior. Handa rin ay hantana nga makita liwan si Junior. Burubhay, bakun rin man git itamaan kagahid ang mga tao sa sagwa. Naguntat rin si Nay Gloria sa paghibi. Sa salas rin ang pamilya nga nalistan, daw ginlihap ang dughan ni Berting kang mabatian na ang limog ni Junior. Ayan, tingnan niyo ang lolobasin ninyo, mabait yan. Hambal ni Junior sa mga bata, sa malulo nga limog, kag ang punto, kang pagtinagalog daw kinaray agid. Pamilyar kay Berting ang limog nga dya, limog kang taho nga pinakapalangga na sa ibabaw kang kalibutan. Amo dya ang limog nga niyaanyangal na firme sa pagbugtaw na sa aga kag sa pagturog sa gabi. Burubhay nagbalik si Vilma sa kusina. Hoy, agi, urati mo nagwahaw. Pamangkot ka dyan nga medyo nagayum-yum. Di kaya ng powers mo, no? Dugang pa ka dyan nga panunlog. Maan, may hibayaan mo dyan mga sibuyas. Matag-irigmaan ka rin, burubay. Urat pa dyan ng snacks nga dyan. Kuno abi, nag-aagot na sabat ni Berting. Suplada, sabat ni Vilma. Daralingling sa bahol na kaldero. Agad silangan kung nagbukal rin ang ininit nga tubig. Nagputi-puti bala si mong junior. Sog po ni Vilma. Wala lang nagsabat si Berting. Hoy, Berting, dyan ka gali. Hambal ni Junior nga nagapasilid sa kusina. Yun parapitan ka dyan sa Berting kagit agbayan. Di inon itong mga bata man. Hambal ni Junior nga nagwa liwan sa salas. Pagbalik ka dyan, ginaguyod na rin ang tatlo ka mga bata nga laki. Mga bata, ito si Tito Berting ninyo. Siya ang best friend ko dito sa may bato. Pakilala ni Junior kay Berting sa mga bata. O mag-bless kayo sa kanya. Nagparapit ang mga bata kay Berting agad magbisa. Maan Junior, baho o si Buyas dyan alima ko. Sige lang, urat kaso ah, sabat ni Junior. Pagkatapos, bisa ka mga bata, naglisensya ang mga dyan nga mapaimaw kay Lula ng The Gloria sa bye-bye. Namuhaw-muhaw ang mga bata sa bye-bye. Okay, basta wag muna kayo maligo. Bawal, paglibing na ng lolo nyo, maligo tayo sa dagat. Bili ni Junior sa mga bata. Ti, kamusta rin ka, Bert? May asawa ka rin? Langulang mo pamangkot ni Junior. Nagpungkot dyan sa atubang ni Berting ka nagbulig pamanit kang ahos. Naglamho si Dilma. Nagparamula si Berting, daw na may haman si Junior. Kag para mapara ang sikwawi ang kalinang sa tanga ng dangadarwa, nagihim siya kag namangkot liwan kay Berting. Ang gusto ko ipamangkot kung may boyfriend rin kao siya sa may bato. Wala rin nagpunggan ni Vilmang magkadlaw. Nagkadlaw rin lang man kag mahilaw kang day Junior kag Berting. Kang maraha ang pansit molo, naglisensya si Berting kay Vilma nga mauli anay tana. Ginarason na lang nga silingan na kung may daklian sa igma ka na inanay kag tatay na. Kang magwa si Berting sa balay kang napatyan, bukas ang sarasalon nga gate sa kaggarahe sa tunga ang auto nga asul ni Junior. Bago ang auto, nagakanang-kanang sa kainit kang adlaw. Duro git nga salamat. Thank you, everyone. Mom Marley? I'm here. Okay. Uh... Berting Agi and Vilma were in the kitchen 
of the bereaved cooking pancit molo when they heard a commotion outside. Abaw, Junior! Your tatay is no more! Nay Gloria's voice in lamentation. Ay, it's Junior! He's here! Bilma cried and stood up. She let go of the onions that she was chopping. Berting was left alone in the kitchen. He sat down and took over slicing the onions. He resisted the urge to run outside to see Junior. His feet felt like they had weights. So what if he saw him? Was he ready to see Junior again? In a little while, the noise outside lessened. Nay Gloria had stopped weeping. The grieving family were all in the sala. Berting felt as if her heart was being pierced when she heard Junior's voice. Ayan, tingnan niyo ang lulubas din ninyo. Mabait yan, Junior said to his children in a soft and loving voice. His Tagalog bore a heavy Kinaraya accent. That voice so dearly familiar to Berting, the voice of the man whom she loved more than anything in this world. This is the voice she sounded in her mind every morning when she woke and at night as she went to bed. Vilma returned to the kitchen after a while. Hui agi. Why did, not, why did you not go out? A naughty smile laid in her face as she queried him. Di kaya ng powers, she said teasingly. Maan, you left the onions. It would be lunch soon, but this stock food is not even cooked yet. Berting pretended to be mad. Suplada, Vilma retorted, peeping into the big pot to check if the water was already boiling. Nung junior seemed to have grown fairer, Vilma added, Berting kept quiet. Hoy Berting, you're here all the time, Junior exclaimed when he entered the kitchen. He went near and put an arm around Berting's shoulder. Where are the children now? Junior said and went back to the sala. He came back with the two children in tow, two boys. Kids, this is your Tito Berting. He is my best friend here in my bato. Junior introduced him to the children. Oh, you ask for his blessing. The children drew near to kiss his hand. Maan, Junior, my hand smell of onions. Sige lang, that's all right, Junior told him. After the children had kissed his hand, they asked permission to go to the beach with their Lola Gloria. The children were attracted to the beach. Okay, basta, don't go swimming yet. Not allowed. After your Lolo's burial, we'll go swimming. Junior admonished his children. Te, how are you, Bert? Do you have a wife now? Junior spoke in a bantering voice. He sat across Berting and helped him peel the garlic. A derisive sound came from Vilma. Berting felt her face redden. Junior was embarrassed. To ease the awkward silence that fell between the two of them, Junior smiled and asked again. I'd like to know if you've found a new boyfriend in my bato. Vilma could not stop her laughter. Junior and Berting also laughed awkwardly. When the pancit molo was cooked, Berting asked Vilma's permission to go home. She said she wanted to check what his nanay and tatay were having for lunch. He offered as an alibi. When Berting left the house in mourning, the iron gate was open and Junior's blue car was parked inside. A new car gleaming in the noonday sun. So um, I'd like to talk a little bit about um, some translation decisions that I made. I was born in the hinterlands of Iloilo. My first language is Kinaraya. But I was not to grow roots in Iloilo. My family pulled, pulled out when I was about nine years old. I could not speak Kinaraya anymore, but I could understand Kinaraya, spoken or written. It's the phonic quality of the language that I remember best, the one that fills me with nostalgia, 
when I read Jan's story, I could almost hear Kinaraya in my mind, the intonation, the rhythms, the musicality. It is the phonic element of the language that I want to bring into the translation. I want the translation to sound like Kinaraya, even if it is written in English. I want the reader to recognize that this story comes from another language and to sense the flavor of the language of origin. Uh, now take, for example, these words. Bao Junior, your tatai is no more. My glorious voice in lamentation. This is a transliteration of Bao Junior, what a run si tatai mo, which could have been translated thus. Oh, Junior, your father is gone. It is simply flat. I kept expletives like, I, hoy, basta, ti, wherever they occur to garnish the English sentence. Here are some examples in the excerpts we read. Excerpts we read. I will try my best to read them in the accent of the Kinaray as speaker. Ay, it's Junior. He's here. Hoy, again. Why did you not go out? Maan, you left the onions. Suplada. Sige lang, that's all right. Basta, don't go swimming yet. Ti, how are you, Bert? Do you have a wife now? The reader of English may find them awkward or bothersome or quaint, but the Filipino reader, especially the Kinaraya reader, he would recognize it as home. Thank you. Thank you so much, John and Melly, for a really, really enlightening uh, reading as well as uh, talks on the translation. Uh, I think next up we have uh, John uh, introducing the next uh, story. Thank you, G. Um, all right, so let me first introduce um, the writer. Uh, Early Sol Gadong. Early Sol Gadong was born and raised in Barrio Obrero, Iloilo City, and she earned her Bachelor in Science in Applied Mathematics and Master of Education, majoring in Mathematics um, at, from the University of the Philippines, Visayas. She has attended a number of writing workshops in the Philippines, and her poems and stories have seen print in publications um, by Balay Sugidanon, UP Press, Commission sa Wikang Filipino or the National Language Commission and Kasing Kasing Press. She won prizes from the Carlos Palanca Awards for Literature for her short stories in Ligaynon. And she is the vice president of the Hubun Manunulat, a group of West Visayan writers who write in Aklanon, Ligaynon, and Kinaraya. She currently teaches mathematics, statistics, and education courses at the University of the Philippines, Visayas. Um, the translator is myself. I am. For, I teach um, literature and writing at the University of the Philippines, Mindanao. So uh, Sol will now read um, her excerpt in Hiligay. Thank you, John. Uh, first of all, I'd like to thank the editors and publishers and everyone else involved in making this uh, project possible. It's truly an honor to be part of this prestigious roster of writers. I am coming in from Iloilo City and uh, we'd like to refer to our place as the city of love. And I think one of the reasons for this is that when you listen to our language, Hiligaynon, you'll actually hear the love and sensuality from the soft L's and uh, the sing-song intonation. Uh, let me tell you a bit about Hiligaynon, it is mainly concentrated in the regions of Western Visayas, in Iloilo, Capiz, Guimaras, and Negros Occidental, as well in South Cotabato, South, uh, Sultan Kudarat, and North Cotabato in uh, the Soxarjan region. It is also spoken in other neighboring provinces in Western Visayas, and also in some provinces in Central Visayas, in the Bicol region, and even in Romblon and Palawan. 
uh, because Iloilo was one of the original settlements of the Spaniards when they uh, came to the Philippines, it will be easy to notice that Hiligaynon has a large number of words derived from Spanish. Now, one of the things that Filipinos and even those who are not from the Philippines immediately notice about how Hiligaynon is spoken is that there is uh, almost a melodious lilt to it. Uh, the common joke, in fact, is that even when two Ilongos are already uh, raging mad in a fight with each other, you'll never know that they're actually fighting or that they're actually angry with each other because they'd still be speaking in a pretty much loving tone. And I think uh, it has something to do with how the great Halaur uh, River uh, transcends many Ilongo settlements. Uh, they say that people who live near rivers uh, or near bodies of water uh, tend to develop this sing-song intonation. Some have even gone on to say that Hiligaynon has a very feminine sound. And in fact, that was one of my motivations for writing the story that I will be reading in a while. Uh, the story features two women, and it is my pleasure to read it to you now. Salumok sang imo suso. Amoy ni ang siling mo. Yana, nahidlaw na ako sang adobo. Gani isa wala pa nagsilak ang adlaw, samtang mahamuok ang imo pagtulog. Nagbangon ako gikan sa paghigda sa imo dughan, sa lumok sang imo suso. Kag nang himos agod magkadto sa tinda sa bangga aganan, sa highway sang pabiya. Gintudlo mo ini sa akon kagabi sang nag-agi kita dire pagkatapos mo ako ginsugat sa airport. Amo ini ang dalagan sang aton sugilanon. Ched, kadako na gid sang ginlain sang Iloilo no? Aho o, oh, kadamo na sang nagbago dire. Ti, shabulais tinigihapon bisa naglain na ang mayor? Ah, sus, hindi ka magpati sa mga amo sina nga sugilanon ah. Halin sang una, tugtog subong sa paghigugma lang nagakahay ang mga ilonggo. Ginsugpunan mo ini sang kadlaw. Apang daw halin lang ini sa puwak, wala nagikan sa dughan. Amoy niyang pagpadayon sang aton sugilanon. Perte, nagid ka traffic sa Cebu subong. Uh, doble ko ni kumparar sang five years ago. Daw parihas nagid sang traffic sa Manila. Tuwad ka? Kung sa bagay, nagamat amat naman gani bugat ang traffic diri sa ilo-ilo. Pamatsyag ko, amun naging manin yung nagkakalatabo sa mga dalag ko nga syudad diri sa aton pungsod. Uh, Pagkadto ko gani sa Davao last month, tuma naman karikot sang traffic. Bisan gani dito sa inyo sa kalibo, nagagotok naman ang karsada. O, oh, nagano ka sa Davao? Uh, wala, wala. Malipot lang nga bakasyon ah. Ah, okay. Nakabakasyon ka man sa Kalibo? <laughs> Kay sino ako mabakasyon dito? Nagyan lang naman pa Boracay. Ninyo? Ah, I went with one of my friends. Ginkumpra ko ang mga panakot nga pila ka best ko naman ginbakal sa katu pito katuig naton nga pagnubiyahanay. One-fourth nga kilo sang manok kombinasyon sang hita nga bahin nga paborito ko kagpakpak nga paborito mo wala sa aton nga duha ang kauyon sang pitsyo duha ka bilog nga dalag ko nga ahos isa ka putos sang paminta duha ka sa shay sang rikado isa ka gamay nga butilya sang langgaw kag duha ka gamay nga sa shay sang seasoning nagbakal man ako sang isa ka kilo nga bugas Bisan pa nga sa aton pagsugilanon na sugid mo nga wala na ikaw masyado nagakaon sang kanon. Ngala ko man nga daw naggulugamay ikaw. Pinakaulihi ko ginbakal ang tunga sa dusina nga itlog. Amo ini ang imo sabat sang ginpamangkot ko ikaw kun ano na lang ang ginakaon mo subong sa baylo sang kanon. Uh, sandwich kag salad kun kaysa pasta. Ginalikawan ko naman ang pork kag beef, pero nahidlaw na ako sang adobo. 
that's the end of my excerpt. Thank you for listening, John. Thank you, Saul. Now here is the excerpt of Saul's story um, translated to English. This is what you said. Yana, I miss your adobo. And so before the sun could shine while you were still deep in sleep, I got up from lying on your chest in the softness of your breasts and prepared to go to the market in Banga Aganan along the highway of Pavia. You pointed this out to me the night before when we passed by the place after I picked you at the airport. This is what we talked about. Ched, Iloilo has changed so much, no? Yes, so many things have changed here. The, are you still shabulized, even if the mayors knew? Sus, don't listen to those stories since before until now, the Ilongos have only been high on love. You followed this with a laugh, but laughter that came from the throat, not from the chest. The traffic jams in Cebu are really bad now. It has doubled compared to five years ago, almost like the traffic situation in Manila. Is that so? Well, actually, even Iloilo's traffic slowly getting worse too. I feel that this is really what's happening in the big cities here in our country. When I went to Davao last month, traffic's also complicated. Even in your place in Calibo, the roads are starting to get crammed. Oh, what, what were you doing in Davao? Uh, nothing, just a short vacation. Oh, okay. Have you also visited Calibo? Ha, ha, uh, who will I visit there? We just passed by the place going to Boracay. We? I went with one of my friends. I bought the ingredients that I had many times bought in the seven years that we were together. One fourth kilo of chicken, a combination of Thai, which was your favorite part, and wing, which was mine. None of us liked chicken breast. Two big cloves of garlic, a pack of pepper, two sachets of ricado, a small bottle of vinegar, and two small sachets of special seasoning. I also bought a kilo of rice, even if during our conversations, you told me that you didn't eat that much rice anymore. No wonder you lost some weight. I bought last half a dozen eggs. This is what you told me when I asked you that you ate in what you ate in place of rice, sandwich and salad, sometimes pasta. I'm staying away from pork and beef, but I miss adobo. Thank you. So, um, Hiligaynon, I've always thought for a long time that Hiligaynon was my first language because I grew up in Capiz. That's a province that is uh, between Iloilo and Aklan. And we speak, it turned out, uh, a language that is slightly different from Hiligaynon, but uh, it's called Kapisnon. Uh, it's sort of a combination or, or like somehow related to Karaya and Akyanon and at the same time closer to Hiligaynon. So when I translated Saul's story, it was very familiar to me uh, because Hiligaynon is also spoken here in Mindanao in Southern Philippines. What I did was something that's similar to what um, Merle Alunan did in her translate with her translation of Kinaraya. I wanted to uh, I wanted the reader to um, have a sense that this text is coming from a different language, a particularly tender sounding or, or gentle sounding language. That's why in uh, the dialogue particularly, I, I try to capture the cadence of Iligaynon and I retain certain words as well, including interjections. But overall, um, apart from language, um, the story, I wanted to be able to capture how the story of a relationship between two women is uh, somehow um, foregrounding uh, the current political situation uh, happening in the Philippines. So I'm very happy to have been able to translate early Saul's work. Thank you. Thank you so much, Saul, and thank you so much, John. That's really, really beautiful. Yeah, we can really hear the love in the language and the love in the translation too. 
Uh, I think next up, uh, Alo is going to be introducing the next pair of uh, writers and uh, translators. Right over to you. Yes, yes thank you, Jim. Uh, for our next author and translator uh, tandem, we have uh, Christian Cordero and uh, Bernard Capinpin. Uh, to introduce first uh, the author, uh, Christian Cor Sendon Cordero is a poet, fictionist, translator, and filmmaker based in Bicol. His books of poetry in three Philippine languages have won the Madrigal Gonzalez Best First Book Award, the Philippine National Book Awards, and the Gintong Aklat Awards. In 2017, he represented the Philippines uh, in the International Writing Program at the University of Iowa. He was also appointed Artist in Residence by the Center for Southeast Asian Studies at the University of Michigan, Ann Arbor. As a translator, he has translated the works of Rainer Maria Rilke, Jorge Luis Borges, Franz Kafka, Oscar Wilde into Bicol and Filipino. His current projects include the Bicol, Bicol translations of Jose Rizal's two novels. He'll be one of the recipients of the South. He already did receive the Sea Wright Award uh, by the Tyrell in November 2020, last November 2020. Serves as deputy director of the Ateneo de Naga University Press and runs an independent bookshop and art space, The Savage Mind, in his home city. Uh, for um, for the translator, uh, he, he was a uh, former a colleague of mine in uh, one, of, uh, one of the student organization, writing organizations uh, I joined uh, during my undergrad years, the UP Writers Club. So Bernard Capinpin is a poet and translator. He is currently working on the translation of Ramon Guillermo's Ang Makina ni Mangkuring. He resides in uh, Quezon City. So I think... Uh, Christian, uh, you can take the floor. Is Christian here? Is Christian around? Arlo, I don't think Christian is around. Maybe you can read the, an excerpt in Filipino. I think Ber Ber Bernard is oh, here. Bernard. Maybe, maybe okay. he can read uh, uh, and talk about uh, the translation. Okay. I'll proceed with the translation. Okay, good morning, good evening, everyone. Um, I translated this story from Filipino, but uh, Christian also has a version of this in Rinconada, one of the languages spoken in the Bicol region in southern Luzon. I have a, a bit of a cold, so I hope you can uh, bear with my reading. As soon as the lamp was lit at six every evening, and the chickens would flutter down from the cacao and jackfruit trees. Father would leave. He wore shabby military fatigues, boots as large as my legs, an antique amulet on which was inscribed an angelus that only father could read and understand. Que se cop, Dios mios, Dios noter. I had once attempted to say it aloud, but I, was, I almost swallowed my own tongue. He said that the prayer is sacred that words have their own power and that these should not be taken lightly. When one time he caught me in the act of stashing it in my pocket, father had warned me that I would continue to utter the Angelus. All my hair would fall off and my tongue would fully contort. I had wanted to use the triangular amulet with an open eye in the middle as ammunition. It was said to be the Lord's eye, the vision of the open eye, which seemed to have been carved out of the sky by lightning, was said to have been my father's grandfather. It was said to have been seen by father's grandfather. The amulet weighed as much as, a, as the dozen marbles and 20 flattened bottle caps we used to play that scene. <clears throat> Whenever father wore the amulet, no metal or bronze could wound him, only lightning, snake bite, or any bite from a wild animal. Instead of scolding and welting me with his belt after catching me, father would calmly ask for his amulet and would merely exchange it for a peso he, he took out from his ear. These past few months, father's departures had become more frequent. He came home in the early hours of the morning, as with the bats living in the old bell tower in the church of Santiago, who was father's favorite saint. So when I was born on the day of the saint's feast day, he did not hesitate to make me a namesake of his mounted, <clears throat> mounted saint. 
Santiago was the patron saint of cavalry and soldiers. He was one of the Lord's 12 disciples, one of San Juan's brothers, prominently seen in his iconography, where decapitated heads and dismembered men strewn underneath Santiago's figure. They wore flashy turbans and had beards that seemed to have been hair curled by mother's friend, like those of Claridel or Antonio Luna seen above blackboards. The men scattered below the patron saint's feet were apparently called Moros, enemies of the Christians. Even before the arrival of the Spaniards, they were said to have often raided the towns and abducted young women to take as childbearers and slaves. Moros were said to have, have weaned on pig's heart and when they, were in the, when they were in the womb. These people were the same ones that San Miguel trampled upon on the gin bottles label. If one should examine him closely, Santiago's eyes were said to overflow with anger. His eyeballs, said an old sacristan, were cast from gold that came from a mountain of ice in South America, while the head and arms were fashioned from pure ivory in Africa. Many have tried to steal the santo, but no one ever succeeded. The Moros, who still continue to wreck havoc, had also attempted to steal it during the first years of the Spanish era. But due, due to the miraculous statue, they could not, not sack our town because of spreading rumors that Santiago's horse would come alive and would sprout flame, flaming horns like those of a bull if ever an enemy should come near it. It was believed that its eyes were more powerful than the amulet father wore and every, anyone wielding it would at, attain unbelievable strength. <clears throat> there had also been some rumors in town that each time the Santa went missing from its altar, it was accompanying father's group whenever they raided the towns of Topas, Mal Malawag, and Tapayas, which were reportedly teeming with rebels that Apo had ordered to be pursued. These rebels were the new morals. <clears throat> so um, Christian story is, in essence, a uh, coming-of-age story, uh, Buildings Roman. Our narrator has his uh, sexual and political awakening in, the, in a small town, in a small Bicol uh, town, during martial law, rife with its uh, violence and conflict. <clears throat> the power of this story lies in its ability to uh, conjure a metaphor in service to the plot, uh, pushing the story to the extreme. What is shocking in the story is not so much as the father's death, but then the narrator's uh, complete uh, acceptance of the state of things. It's a uh, seemingly natural order. Instead of repudiating those that are vile, abhorrent, and disgusting, as with that typical protagonist from a uh, building's Roman, uh, Christian has him, the narrator, um, be subsumed within this uh, deprived, uh, depraved society. Uh, situation where he cannot break away from. And so he cannot help but uh, take in all that is abject. In effect, the <clears throat> writing is circular. The story ends where it has to begin. The narrator is fixed on particular objects, the iconography of St. James, his father's amulet, but most especially of um, the phallus and the aswang. In my translation, I, I've attempted to depict uh, the narrator's near obsession uh, with, with these images, uh, these uh, recurring motives. In Christian's uh, lengthy sentences, each descri little description um, piled up, there is uh, no too insignificant detail to be omitted. Um, I have to, <laughs> I have tried to uh, replicate the oftentimes labyrinthine but never laborious syntax of the sentences. Uh, the ease of their flow and their powers of obsession and observation. Thank you so much, Bernard, for actually, you know, uh, reading the English translation and explaining the context for it to really help us to actually understand the story better. Thank you so much for that. And I uh, believe uh, Christine is actually introducing the next pair of uh, writers and translators. Hello. Um, our next speaker is uh, Elizabeth Joy Serrano Quijano, translated from Cebuano by John Bengan. Uh, Elizabeth Joy Serrano Quijano uh, 
received a BA in mass communication from Holy Cross in, of Davao College, where she developed her dedication to journalism and passion for creative writing. She works as a college instructor teaching development communication at Southern Philippines Agribusiness and Marine and Aquatic School of Technology. It's in, the school is in Malipa, Davao Occidental. Uh, Joy is proud of her Iguro at Kapampangan and Dilaan roots. Her writing, she says, is also her advocacy for the indigenous people of Davao del Sur. Uh, translations of her stories by John Bengan have been published in Words Without Borders, World Literature Today, Lit, and Shenandoah. Uh, John, very quickly, is a uh, has an MFA in creative writing from the new school. He is a recipient of a Ford Foundation International Fellowship and has won prizes from the Philippines, uh, from the Philippines Free Press Literary Awards and the Carlos Palanca Memorial Award for his short fiction. John lives in Davao City. Uh, Joy? Yes, hi, good morning. Mayung Adlao, good evening. I am Joy. So. I'm going to talk about the Binisaya. So I wrote in uh, Binisaya language, which is largely spoken here in Davao region, particularly in the province of Davao del Sur. Uh, the Binisaya is, I'd like to emphasize that is different from the Sinubuan ng Binisaya, which is largely spoken in the Visayas. Although majority of the indigenous peoples in the Philippines live in the island of Mindanao, Binisaya is also widely and widely understood and spoken, particularly here in the province of Davao del Sur. Even the indigenous people like myself, Ablaan, grow up speaking multiple languages such as the Binisaya, the Blaan, the Filipino, and English. Binisaya is um, brought by the Visayan settlers, and that is why most of our places or towns here in Davao del Sur were named after the, the towns in the Visayas. We have here the New Argao, New Baclayon, New Morsha, New Dalagit, New Silay, and many more. So that is why the language is similar to the Cebuanos uh, Binisaya, but it has a lot of differences. So let me read a, an excerpt from my sto uh, short story translated by Sir John Bengan, Dili Pwede Migawas or Can't Go Out. Nangota na akong maestra kung nakakita na ba daw mi og TV. Nakita na ko sa picture apan wa ko kabalo kung unsa na. Wa pa ko kaadto sa Digos ug sa Davao apan nakadungog na ko kung unsa to. Dagan daw tao, dagang sakyanan. Usahay dili ko maibog kay kalain na ng daghang tao ug daghang sakyanan kay basing maligsan ko. Nguni ma'am Ed na ang akong maestra sa grade 3. Ang uban daw, maghandong og falling star. Mungang yung unta ko sa mga bituon nga, makasuroy po po ang ligos, bisag ka usalam. Apat, gabi ilang nagapakita ang mga bituon. Dili, pwede mo gawas. Motura gyud ni ang kulbasod ang akong nasakyan. Katong naghatod ni sa among sinanggi nga mais. Wa pa ko kasakay og jeep. Kanang ingon ni ma'am nga bus, van, eroplano, barko. Usahay ako muna huna moabot po sa langit. Nakaka mga sakyanan sa langit. Nakaka kuryente dito. Kanang mga suga ay nagkagabi eh. Nga dili na kinahanglan o gas. Radyo ragyod ang akong nakita o nadunggan. Apan kay wala may battery ang among radyo, nisamot kami ngaw among payag. Kun mo hangin, gasayaw-sayaw ang among Kay na may cellphone si ma'am. Pwede magpicture, mami na o kanta, pwede magbasa. Nangutana ko kay mama kung kabalo ba siya mo gamit o cellphone. Ang ingon niya, di manggani siya kabalo mo sulat sa iyang ngalan. 
Grade 1 lang daw siya taman. O gibuya na kay Papa, katong 12 anyos siya. Kung saan po niya pag-eskwela, kung dili pwede magawas. Kwa ni sugot si Mama nga ibuya po ko sa among silingan nga si Randy. Gusto ni Mama mo Muhug katulog kay mo tabang sa maisan. Mayo pa ang uban akong mga kadula. Makauban sa ilang mama kong release sa porpis. Wa daw mi apil sa porpis kay di musugot si Papa. Wa ganit mi kabalo sa among birthday. Nga sige na pangayo si ma'am sa among birth certificate. Ingon ni mama, wa mo ana kay di ta pwede mo gawas. Thank you, Joy. So now you, I will sir. read an ex. Thank you, Joy. So now I will read an excerpt from the story, the same one that Joy read. My teacher asks if we have ever seen a, a TV. I've seen one in a picture, but I don't know what it's for. I haven't been to Digos or to Davao, but I've heard about those places. So many people, they say, so many vehicles. Sometimes I don't feel so bad because so many people and so many vehicles might run me over. Ma'am Edna, my grade three teacher, says that others wish on a falling star. I'll also wish on a star that I might visit Digos even just for once. But the stars only come out at night and I can't go out. I've only ever ridden Uncle Basud's motorcycle, the time we delivered our harvested corn. I haven't been in the Jeep or what mom calls bus and van, airplane, ship. Sometimes my mind reaches the heavens. Are there also cars in heaven? Is there electricity, lights in the night that don't need fuel? I've only seen and listened to a radio, but our radio ran out of batteries and our house is now more quiet. When the wind blows, our cogon roof dances and our bamboo walls snap. Mama didn't go to Bangkal to buy batteries for the radio because there are soldiers. Anyway, I've seen a cell phone because mom Edna has a cell phone. You can take a picture, listen to a song, you can read. I asked mama if she knew how to use a cell phone. She said to me, she doesn't even know how to write her name. She only reached grade one. And then she was married off to Papa when she was only 12. How could she have gone to school if she couldn't go out? Mama didn't agree to me being married off to our neighbor, Randy. Mama wants me to finish at least high school. Well, I finish. I've repeated grade three twice in a week. I'll skip classes to help at the cornfield. My playmates are better off. They get to go with their mamas when the four piece are released. We didn't join the four piece because Papa wouldn't let us. We don't know our birthday, our birthdays and Mama Edna kept asking for my birth certificate. Mama said to me, you don't have that because you can't go out. All right, so when I first read this story uh, in, a, in, a, in a workshop. And then later on, uh, I tried to, to translate it. I was, I was so excited uh, having seen um, the Binisaya of Mindanao written in such a way. Joy is a part of the Blaan community. And you can see in the story that her storytelling technique is similar to that of the oral tradition of, mm. of, of, the, of the place. You know, you can see the repetitions of the, of the phrase, can't go out, can't go out, can't go out. This is a story about a child. It's told from the point of view of a child. And in the original Binisaya, it, it does sound very much like that of a child's point of view. But of course, it is artistically done. And I tried to capture that in, in, in English. Uh, the thing is, this is not just um, a variation. Um, of the language. It's also an EO dialect. The, the narrator herself has her own way of spelling words, particularly words of objects that she hasn't seen or know about. So in that case, uh, like certificate is spelled certificate and I retained it um, later on for this publication. I actually missed that the first time I, I translated it, um, which appeared in Words Without Borders. Um, but for this publication, I caught that one. And um, because that's, 
the di- that part of the dynamism of her language. And however, for battery, for example, because I I I know that the narrator knows what battery is, even though she spelled it at, uh, phonetically, I retained it in English as battery. However, for cell phone. Um, there's an F, S-E-L-F-O-N, because in Blaan, they have an F sound. They don't have to borrow from English to, to have the F sound. So I retain the, the orthography in cell phone. And um, falling a star, I retain that one. Um, because this texture of the story for me is what makes it so alive. And at the same time, um, even though that the whole story doesn't quite follow the Western plot movement, it does have this haunting oral um, structure that I really wanted to retain. I tried to retain in English. So I hope that you enjoy the story when you get to read it in the book. Thank you. Thank you so much, Joy, for reading and John for translating and uh, explaining too. you know, those translation the issues that you uh, faced and your solutions that you came up with. Really, really enlightening. Thank you so much. And I think, John, you're uh, up again, isn't it, to introduce our next pair of uh, writers and uh, writer and uh, translator. <laughs> yes, I am. Um, so let me introduce the next reader, Fiery Hill T. Ramos, writes poems or Sidai. Uh, that's what it's called in, in the Warai language, and fiction or susumaton, and children's stories in Warai, Warai. She won the 2019 National Commission for Culture and the Arts Writer's Prize for the novel in Warai. Her poems and stories appeared in different anthologies and journals. She has a degree in communication arts and education from the University of the Philippines, and she has worked as a teacher for two decades. Fiery Hilti Ramos, who lives in Tacloban City, is currently working on her novel. And the translator is once again, um, Merli M. Alunan. So let us listen to Fiery and then Merli. Good morning, everyone. I'm calling in from Tacloban City in Leyte, the regional capital of Eastern Visayas. What I is an Austronesian language is the it's the fifth most spoken uh, native regional language in this part of the Philippines in Eastern Visayas. This is spoken by the people of Leyte, Samar, and Biliran Islands. There are five variations of some of Warai: the northern northwest Samar variation, the eastern Samar variation the Kulaba Biliran variation, and then the Northern Leyte variation and the Abuyog variation. My Warai is the Northern Leyte variation specifically rooted in Tacloban City, the melting pot of the region. My, for this fiction, for this short story or susumaton, we call, we call a short story Susumaton in Warai, or at least the closest um, translation we could uh, use is Susumaton. Um, my Susumaton, the characters of my Susumaton are mostly women. And this particular story is about a housewife who makes a very important decision in her life. So I'm going to read a portion of it. Ginsipat ni Paking ha rear view mirror an iya mga pasahero. Nahaharusros si Cardo ha iya kalingkod ha may istribohan jeep. Nabalabag ha pasilyo an iya tiil nga naabot nga to tabok nga bangko. Matarom ang siplat ni Cardo kantaling nga nalingkod ha iya sa pit ha tuo. Sa gipuan wala nga kamot ni Taling pag sarop han nagdidinugo nga samad ni Cardo samtang nakaputabintana han jeep an iya tuo. Nalingiw hitaling kan kardo, nakadto ha windshield, han jeep ang iya pangitaan. Panalagsa, linilingi ni taling hi kardo, pero lingi nga dayon may panliparo. Nagyawyaw hi kardo, ginmumusak hitaling. Ikaw, si A, si A ka lang, an imo pagpatay gudhaakon para makalibri ka na hit imo lalaki. 
ginduon ni taling pagtio ng dugnit hasamad ni Cardo. Agi, agi nga yawa ka. Imnik po tan iya paglingkod ni Cardo. Ginkaptan han iya tuong nga komot ano wala ni taling nga naduon han iya samad. Timnoro si taling. Ari nga sa dida. Lumingi yung Ricardo hagawa sa jeep. Ginharayo ang iya na wong kantaling. Makatalwas la ako, di pan amo ngayawa ka. Kita unta, baton ni Taling. Sumiplat si Cardo Kantaling, nanliliparo, ngan tumuk para hagawas hanjip. Pakalapos ni Raha Alahas Machine Shop, nabatian ni Paking ang mga bagting hanlingganay Harry Dem Tourist Church. Lumingi hiya nga doon iya pasahero. Harani na kita, Bethany. Pag-agi ni Raha El Repuso, Lumingi hi paking han mga nanlalabang akrus han mga statwa han kaanghelan ha pader han sementeryo. Nangilikdan hi pading nga nanuktok ha bangko han jeep na nabi. Tabila, tabila, maagila kami. Ayaw laan na iniyo paginteresi ita adi nga usa. Samtang hitaling, lumingi kan kardo. Dumusog paghirani. Iya ginsuksukan iya duha nga kamot ha irok ni Cardo ngan gintuhay ang kalingkod han na daus-dus nga asawa. Pagkaabot hari dem turist, samtang naman ni Obran wala nga kamot ni Paking han manibela, pagpalikuhan sa rakyan ti Pasulod ha Bethany, sumingit pagdaus-dus ang iya tuo nga kamot. King, ughaw ni Cardo, malapos ka na ha langit, iguring nalak kan San Pedro. Emero ni Cardo, ayaw hin intrimis. Dardiritso tikad doha may emergency room ang jeep. Pag-abot nira, dali-dali nga humawa si Paking ang ginlipot ang iya mga pasahero. Ginagbayan ni Paking Ricardo nga may lakip danas, gintugwayan ti pasulod ha emergency room. Nasunod ha duduha hitaling, bit-bit ang dugnit nga nahumog na hindugo. Ha intradahan emergency room, gintapuhirahin usang nurse nga lang kawag nga ginuupdan nga doha pinakaharani nga bakante nga kama. Ginpahigdahan nurse Ricardo, dumao pan doktor, manusa pa nga nurse nga bulaw ang buhok, nga ira gin panginano, ang kan Cardo Samad, nga nagtitikang naliwat pagtabigis hindugo. Deep laceration, severed artery, nakikita ko na iti a collarbone. Nurse Igtemp Anay Adi Katima, agi ka mo harad para x-ray ng OR na kita. Yes, doc, baton hanlang kawag nga nurse. Lumingi kadali ang doktor kanda pakingan pumakiana. Na ano inihiya? Nga laong ha doktor, nga balik liwat pagtamod ha samad ni Cardo, samtang ginaayos pagsulot ha iya kamot ang guantes. Amo na tiya duk, samaran na pag-uli, baton ni Taling. Piho ko, igintapo kayin agway kay hubog. Lumingi yung Ricardo pakabatihan baton ni Taling. Igingaod ni iyan iya matarong nga si Plat ha mga kurtina nga nakasabit palibutan iya katri. Nanubud ang luha ha iya mga mata. Pero ugsa pa inin makapanuro, gindali-dali pagkuskus ni Cardo, halikod han iya palad ang nagtataog nga luha. Ikaw it misi sinimana, na ano ka man liwat, na nahubag man itim na wong. Oo, dok, baton ni Taling, ng dagmit nga ginsudlay han iya o sa nga kamot, han iya buhok ng igintabong tikadi hama iya wala nga api. Aw, inin, kuan dok, waray, napakulobla ko. Sige, nasiring ka man, nga laong liwat han doktor nga nakatawahin ni Lau. Ada inin nga imo mister dako inin it iya samad nga naiiguna ang iya tulan kinahanglan naman hiya operahan thank you Early? Yeah. Okay, there we go. This is a bloody story. As he drove, Paking takes quick glances at his passengers in the rear view mirror. Cardo was stretched out in the back part of the seat, almost falling out his legs stretched to the bench on the opposite side. His eyes turned to Taling, who was seated to his right, were venomous with hatred. Taling had one hand busy, pressing a piece of cloth against Cardo's wound, trying to stop the bleeding. The other hand 
holding on for balance to the jeep's window side. Her head was turned away from Cardo. Her eyes focused forward on the windshield. She would look at Cardo now and then, quickly removing her eyes with a look of disgust. Cardo was ranting, heaping threats and curses upon Taling. You, si ah, si ah, you better look out. You want to kill me because you want to be free with another man. Taling pressed the cloth harder against Cardo's wound. Agi, agi, ngayawa ka, Cardo screamed. Sitting up with a start and taking hold of Taling's hand, it was pressing the cloth on his wound. She snapped back. Shut up! Cardo stared outside the jeep, turning his head away from Taling, grumbling. If I survive this, just wait. Ngayawa ka? Except more to come your way. Let's see. Taling shut back. Cardo glared at Taling, a frown distorting his face. He spat outside the jeep. Past the Alahas machine shop, a king heard the bells of the Redemptorist Church. He glanced at his passengers. We're near Bethany. Past El Reposo, a king saw the crosses and the stone angels showing over the concrete walls of the city's graveyard. Casting a sideways look at them, he knocked on the jeepney seat beside him and mumbled a prayer. Tabila, tabila, we're just passing through. Please don't take any interest now on this other one here. Taling turned his attention, her attention to Cardo. Moving closer to him, she put her hands under his armpits and pulled him up to sit straighter on the seat and keep him from sprawling. They were now by the Redemptorist Church and as Paking maneuvered the vehicle into the Bethany compound, he still managed to make the sign of the cross with his other hand. King! Cardo commented mockingly. You'll get beyond heaven the way you're carrying on. Please whisper a word to San Pedro for me, will you? Im Iroy Cardo, don't make that kind of joke now. The jeep headed straight to the emergency. A king jumped quickly out of the jeep and went to his passengers at the back. He helped Cardo down, supporting him as he walked him to the emergency room. Taling followed the two men, carrying the blood steep cloth. A tall, thin nurse met them at the entrance and guided them to a vacant bed. The nurse made Carlo lie down. A doctor came with it and with him, another nurse with yellow dyed hair. They examined the dune, which was beginning to bleed again. Deep laceration, severe artery. I can see his collarbone. Nurse, do the temp first and then take him to x-ray. After the x-ray, take him to the OR. Yes, doc, the thin lanky nurse said. Doctor turned to Paking and asked, How did you get this? Turning quickly back to look at Carlos' wound, putting his gloves meanwhile. That's how he was, doc. He came home with that wound. Taling spoke up. I'm guessing he got into a fight when he was outside. He's drunk. Carlo turned his head away when he heard Taling's words. He fixed his angry eyes in the curtain surrounding his bed. Tears were stinging his eyes, but before they could flow out, he quickly wiped them off with the back of his hands. And what about you, Mrs? What happened to you? Your face is all swollen. Oh, oh Doc, Taling replied, quickly running a hand to smoothen her hair and bringing it down to cover the left side of her face, which was most battered. Oh, uh, in in Kuando, it's, it's nothing. I just happened to fall on my face. Sige, that's what you're saying, the doctor said with a wry smile on his face. Ada, this husband of yours, his wound is big, reaching the bones. We have to operate on him. Um... What I has certain expressions, particles, expletives that do not translate well into English. They have no particular meaning, but they are weighted with emotion or attitude. Just as in John Erimil Chidoro's story about Berting Agi, I wanted a translation from Warai into English to carry the flavor of the source language to mirror the psychical environment from which the story springs. I wanted 
the translation to retain a sense of otherness of the source language to sound translated without being awkward at the same time that I want it to be thoroughly comprehensible in the target language. One of the decisions I made was to retain these untranslatable expressions in the target language. They do much in intensifying the sense of otherness that I want in the story. Uh, what are some of these? Uh, what are some of these untranslatable expressions? You see, ah, see, ah, you better look out. It's impossible to translate see, ah, into English. I cannot find an equivalent for it. It's an expression of strong displeasure. Another one, agi agi ngayawa ka. Agi may be a variant of uh, aray or agay, agui. Arui, aragui, these are Visayan expressions of pain, as in the word ouch in English. It infers a strong feeling, not just of pain, but sometimes also of excitement or disgust, pleasure, displeasure, depending on the situation and the way it is said. Ngayawa ka translates into you devil. Warais are champions of irony, however, and use this expression with all sorts of unpredictable meanings, some of which may even be complementary. Another expression is tabi tabi la we're passing through. This expression may directly translate into, if you please allow us safe passage. The Bisaya believe that invisible beings live side by side with us, occupying the same space we do, guarding trees, wells, forests, hills, rivers, mountains. We say tabi la, tabi la, as an act of courtesy to these invisible beings so that we may not offend the spirits because they can turn malevolent on us if we are careless this way. In the story, Paking addresses tabi tabi to the dead in the cemetery so that they will not take away his friend, his friend Cardo. We have the expression im iroi, im iroi. It's, it's a full expression, it's birathan im iroi, which means son of a bitch. I mean, there may be that's the equivalent. The Visayan expression is saltier and more flavorsome. And then the word kuan. Kuan is the most wonderful word in the Visayan language. In the Visayan languages, it occurs in all the five major Visayan languages and is universally accepted and understood. It's a go forward when the right one does not come to mind. It is also untranslatable in English. You just say, Kuan, Gikuha ko ang Kuan ni Kuan kahapun ambut asanat gin anonia ang Kuan ni Kuan. You know, that, that way, that sort of thing. What is to do with the untranslatable expressions? Keep them and give character to the translation. Salamat. Umayong buntat, magigikan sa takloban. Thank you so much, Firi, and thank you so much, Mele, for that wonderful reading and translation and uh, explanation as well. Uh, all these uh, wonderfully untranslatable expressions, right, <laughs> to tell us, you know, well, there are in a, a completely different worldviews that we are, you know, not privy to. And so, but it's so lovely to be granted a kind of access to it through your explanation. Uh, I think we have uh, Daryl up next to actually introduce the last pair of a uh, writer and translator for us. Uh, Daryl. That's right. Thank you. Thank you so much. I, I can't, I can't keep this smile off my face because what I is my first language and it's very refreshing and liberating to hear um, what I <laughs> curse words and, and phrases. Thank yeah. you again, early and, and fiery. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so um, uh, I, I, I'm aware that we're beyond the time and I thank you again, everyone for, for staying. Um, the last pair of um, writers uh, and readers that I'm, I'm going to introduce um, will again uh, feature Merle. Um, uh, John Barrios, like John Iremil Teodoro, um, who has published a dozen books and won many awards in different lang Philippine languages, 
um, is also from the Western Visayas region and is also a multilingual, multi awarded writer of stories and plays. Jan Barrio is currently teaches in um, UP, the University of the Philippines and the Visayas in, in, uh, in the Iloilo campus. Um, if John Teodoro's story features the language of the coastal villages, what's perhaps interesting um, is how John uh, Barrios's work uses a very urban Akianon tongue. So another language from that region. The work we featured in this anthology was translated again by Merlia Elunan, whom you just met. And I'd like to take this opportunity to say a little bit more about Merli and her work. Merli is perhaps the most important writer and cultural worker in the Philippines today, a multilingual, multi-awarded writer of many books of poetry and literary history and anthologies. She has been a champion of Philippine languages and diverse literary practices for many decades. And she continues to link and to mentor writing groups outside of the capital of uh, Metro Manila. And all this she does from her home in Tacloban City. So um, once more, um, Merlia Lunan and John Barrios. Good morning and good evening, everyone. Uh, I'm speaking here uh, in Iloilo province. Uh, I'm an Aklanon. Um, my language is Aklanon. Uh, one of the three languages uh, spoken in the island of Panay, uh, together with uh, Kinaraya uh, and Hiligaynon. Uh, it's uh, an unusual and a unique language because uh, it's kind of difficult, uh, especially it's uh, a sonantal consonant, like uh, in Kinaraya and in Hiligaynon, they have uh, the word uh, uh, baras or balas, uh, while in Akyanon, we have uh, yeah. bagas. Uh, so it's the ga sound, the yes. ga, yi, yi, gu, gu. Uh, So it's uh, really difficult if you're not uh, born Aklan. <laughs> so it's spoken uh, in the province of Aklan and uh, some parts of uh, the Philippines uh, by those who migrated from our uh, home province. Um, it's uh, it's a language uh, uh, close to Boracay Island, and uh, it's uh, well, it's also the language uh, spoken during uh, the Atiatihan Festival uh, <laughs> in our town, Kalibu Atiatihan, the famous. Uh, my my story is uh, entitled uh, Relacion. It's a uh, it's a story in three episodes. Uh, it's a story of uh, three women. Uh, one. Um, a house help, uh, the other um, a, a student prostitute, and the other one is, uh, is a bank teller. Uh, it's a story uh, which is connected to each other uh, and, uh, and happened only in, uh, in, in one setting, uh, the SM mall. So it happened in the ground floor, the, the first floor and the second floor, uh, all uh, uh, expressing or representing different uh, ideological constructs. So I will read the second episode of uh, my short story. Silorna. Late yun imaw. Pagkapanaog na pagkapanaog itaksi, hay halos gumpato na na ro limang gaang hagdan para mapadali ro pagsugod sa kwadradong bukas nga tagiliran it korting kahon it sapatos nga mall. Korting sapatos dahil sa rason nga gina Hindi malipatan itag-ana nga imaw hay nagumpisa sa pagbaligya it sapatos. Sang kahalimbawa kon paalin ro art hay naapektuhan it alaala. Sa unang grado it mall, sanda makikit anay it anang BF nga si Rick. Alas 12 kuno. Pero late yon imaw, it sang oras na delayro pagtao it exam it andang prop sa Math 101. Finals to ag hindi pwede nga dasig-dasigon o aywanan. Kilagang terror paro anang prop. Gani bisan mayad pa imaw, kinahangang siguraduhon. Kinahangan na nang makabuo it mataas nga points para makapabiling libre ro anang pag-eskwela. Sang dagon yun lang ag tapos yun imaw sa accountancy. Ko first sem nga nadugaan imaw scholarship, hay napilitan imaw nga mag-aywan it ID sa andang sikyo it tatlong beses. Okay yang ro mga nauna nga customer nga bumanat ka na dahil kaparehong student. Ro ikatatlo ro medyo bukon it okay maliban sa edad 
mabaho pa it ginhawa. Bisan uwa imaw gapaharo, aga pahulikap it suso, nadiri paghihapon imaw sa paginhawa. Agagas it alima it magugang. Madatong ng ugaling dahil rekomendado it jugila nga tagaharo nga gataw it mga bayi sa mga bisita ni mayor. Madali nga kwarta, pero pinundo na na kat napapasar na na tanan subject. Balik sa pagiging scholar. Daywang beses nang ginbalibaran do text is jugila nga tagaharo. Gainta abiro anang nabatsagan nga ra kay Rick. Manug anom nga buwan yon sandang on. Sa text yang sanda nagkakilaga, mga tatlong buwan man siguro sanda nga naging mag-textmate hasta nga nasampiton imaw ni Rick nga mag-eyeball sanda sa SMCT. Ruadlaw aga bii nga pagpadaga ag pagbato ni text messages ay nakadugang pa sa pagdabdab it anang balat tiyagon. Sang beses nga ni hay nga istorya na na sa anang amiga kung paano na naging ubra ro pag masturbate samtang ginabasa ro mga green jokes nga ginpadaga ni Rick. Nauban pa nga ni kuno it pilang beses. Ag sa mga tiempo nga hindi makipagkita si Rick kana hay ro cellphone yun lang ro anang ginagamit nga pamaylo sa penis ni Rick. Ginafa-vibrate na ra kuno sa idagom it anang panty. Bisan makataog ang naguguan yun, uh, imaw. Late yun, imaw. Ang kinahangan pa nga dasiga na naro pagkakang ag basi hindi ko na na maabutan si Rick. Sa sobrang dasig itikang, hay uwa na na hapan-uhan. Prosang kabayi nga nakadungok ag medyo mahilo, matumunga halin sa ground floor it mall. Madasig man doon itikang itbayi. Sa pagbangga nanda, gumupa do bitbit na ng mga libro. Sa walang alima. Pero cellphone niya mang sa toong alima ro uwa ro magpak sa sagog it mall. Uwa imaw it iba nga nahambay kundi, Shit! Shit! Hamad ka tinanga ka! Pero uwa yun nga ni imaw hatuwok it bayi dahil nadugaan nyo tra it ulirat. Ginbuligan imaw ra it sikyo agkat nagbalik ro anang malay ay tumangis ag dumagagan pag uwa it mall. Ginagas pa na na it luyaw ro bayi. Pagkatapos pa o, pahugaton ro anang mga gamit, puguton anang gamit, ay halos dahil ganon yun na naro lugar kung siin gahugat si Rick sa pen shop. Igtos saan makita na bango igtos sanda makita anay bangod may gusto imaw nga pabakon sa nobyo. Birthday na na ag sayod na na nga indi ra magbalibad. Sa anang pagkasayod hay mabaho ro sweldo ni Rick. Sang bilog imaw sa mga saligan ni empleyado it sang ka board member it probinsya it Iloilo. Tapos ay sampito na rayon nga makaon sanda sa Kenny Rogers. Ginlingling na na sa sugod it baligyaan si Rick. Wa ito, bisan anino ito anang BF. Gusto na nang isipon nga late man do anang BF. Nagdesisyon imaw nga sumugod. Diretso imaw nga nagtikang hasta nga makaabot, makaatubang imaw sa sangka manami nga blouse nga kolor puga nga ko isa lang adlaw panana na korso na dahan. Mayad gani o apet nag-interes. Daya ro unang pabakon kay Rick. Binuoy na ra sa hangar. Sinukat. Hinugom. Mahumok taratela. Gusto na na nga maging Anna Rublaus. Sinutsot na ra sa sugod it anang palda. Uwa man lang na nag ipanumdom kung may nagatuwok o uwa. Sa anang pagbalikid, sa may pertahan hay galingo-lingo o rugatuwok na sikyo. Binuo na na Rublaus sa edagom it palda ag binalikit uman sa hangir at dayon sinab- sinabit. Nag- nagadungok ra uwo nga gumuwa sa baligyaan. Samtang gatikang pagayo ay hindi na nagubos nga maintindihan kung hamaan ginubra na na ito. Dalawang beses yung natabo ka na ra. Mas kontrobersyal do una dahil dinakop imaw ag tinawagan pa it manager do andang principal. First year high school imaw ka to ag naging mabudlay para ka ng kalipatan to. Big bang man lang to. Ag kaya man na ng bayaran pero para ako nung may limog na nagasugo ka ng obrahon to. Mabasko gro limog ag hindi na nakayang kontrahon. Hambay guidance counselor na nakato sa high school, ruan ang ginobra ay may madalong nga gin ugatan. Daya ba si kuno ay resulta it pagtago o ag uwat pagpagawa it sang kabukon it masadya nga hitabo kat maisot pa imaw. Kinahangan ka na nga hambaron. Pero apat nga dagon yun nung nagtaliwan kat ginhambay ka na ra. Hasta makaroon dagadaga na gihapon sa dughan ro anang ginakubaan. Pero nahadlok imaw nga mabahuro maduga ka na kung maghambay imaw. 
Sambilog pa, ay masta makaroon, huwa man na nahasayri kung ano roon ang paghahambal roon. Tinaaw na na roon ang rilo. Sang oras, ag just minutos yun doon nagtaliwan. Nag-decide imaw nga maghugat. Nagpagapit imaw sa barandilya nga pabilog. Binuita na na roon magamig nga bakal ag tumanaw sa idagog. Nakita na na roon mga uh, busy sa pag-ayos at temporaryo nga stage. Maconcert o sikat nga si David Pomeranz sa alas 4 itapon. Ang nadumduman na na nga hindi imaw dapat magtindog di karang parte. Hambay ta ng prop sa filo pero mga tawo ko nung natindog di karay mga uwat kwarta o gaban hay pubre. Bisan masubo imaw hay napahibayag man imaw. Hindi na na mahambay kung siin imaw sa daywa. Dumol abi ko no hay uwa gapin patindog bilang bagak kanyang kundi para maging kapareho e kalibutan. Sang kailusyon e kalibutan. Duyon nga ni Rorason, ro pobre hay may lugar sa mall. Sangka sa isaga sa mga lugar nga ginmit lang ita nang prop pero anang ginatindugan. Bisan abi uwa it kwarta hay nagiging persado man sa pagtindog lang sa anang ginatindugan dahil ginaobra kuno nanda nga andang subject ro andang mga nakikita sa idagom. Ginaako nandang andaro mga artista ag singer nga kanta sa temporaryong stage sa idagom. Daya ko nuro uwa nakikita nga rason kung haman pwede nga mag-concert sa mall bisan maisot do lugar ag sangkiri yamang dumakakita it mayad. Daya hay sa bangod ro mga bagay nga pareho it concert hay sangka ideya yamang. Bukod kuno it mas importante ro magtanaw kundi ro ideya nga ro sangka tawo hay nangin tagatanaw. Daya ko no hay extension pa it ginapatindog nga arena kung mga Romano kung siin ginalingaw ro mga tawo hasta malipatan nanda ro tunay nanda nga sitwasyon ro bilog ag madamo nga salaming man sa ibabaw kung siin ginatag gatagos ro silak et adlaw hay gintugad sa estruktura et altar et simbahan kung siin ro hayag nga gatagos hay may mystical ag may mythical nga kahulugan ro hayag nga ra hay bukon et iba nga hayag nga ginagamit sa pagdrawing kay Kristo sa mga Biblia sa mapigod nga hambal, may bendisyon at simbahan ro mga gakatabo nga concert sa tunga nga ra nga party at mall. Tama man siguro anang prop dahil kagabanan nga gabuyot sa pabilog nga bakal hay mga wat kwarta. Aghagos kagabanan man hay gakatanaw sa idagom. Napundo nga mga ro anang pagpanumdom katumunog ro anang cellphone. Dali-dali na nang binuksan do inbox. Binasa na na ro text ni Rick. I can't make it We have meeting. Nagpadaga ito man, it's ang bilog pang message. Guest from Manila will arrive this afternoon. I'll make up tomorrow. Dakos maod nga gumakang imaw pagayo sa pabilog nga bakal. Uwa imaw kasayod kung siin maagto. Medyo hinigop kan roan ang persa at magamig nga bakal. Uwa agon dumadasig nga pitik sa anang dughan. Uwa na na napunggan ro pagtugo it anang luha. Importante para ka na ro adlaw nga ra. Importante para kandang daywa ni Rick. Nakita man ro side nga comfort room. Sumugod imaw. Sa pagsugod na na sa maisot nga pasilyo pag to HCR, hay napahigop it ka pero gaki nga nakapolo it asol sa sugod it shake is pizza nga kaina pa nagabantay ka na. Sorry John. Dahan Can dahan uh, gitang doa nang task. Excuse me John. Malapit na. Yeah, it's it's the last sentence. Okay, sorry. Thank you. Ah. Dahan-dahan ginbutang doa ng CP sa lamesa ag kinuot rapitaka. Tinan-aw rusugod ag ibinalik ito man sa bulsa. Thank you. Do we still have time for the translation? I uh, I Yes, I think we have the translation uh, still because we would be lovely um, to know what John have actually read for us. She, Jen and I have not. Sorry, say that again. Jen and I have not been able to coordinate, so I'm reading a different part of the story. Oh, I so see. Is that all right? Uh, in that case, why don't uh, would you like to say something a little bit about the translation itself yeah. rather yeah. than the reading? Okay, okay. And uh, I also want to say here that you know I know we have just gone over time, like you know, like for about 25 yeah. minutes. So, so okay, everybody who is here, you know, thank you mm -hmm. so much for actually staying on. But please feel free if you have other things to get on to, please uh, feel free to, you know, to go on. Uh, okay, just a little bit about Akianun. Uh, 
uh, translating Jan Barrios in this triptych, because it's a triptych, it's three stories in one story. The characters uh, are presented individually. They are part of one bigger story. Now, it was kind of tricky. For all the story sounded as if the, the characters were talking directly to the reader, there is actually a covert voice filtering the disclosures. So the characters seem to be the one directly reaching out to tell their story, but there's actually a covert, you know, a covert voice directly making judgment about the disclosures in the story. Uh, I was going to read the first part, I, Ida. Told in the third person using the device of central consciousness. We are at once inside the mind of a naive young girl from rural Iloilo, as we are also in the mind of that other girl, the, the, the student uh, prostitute. Uh, this girl, Ida, was falling quickly and surely to the evil traps of um, the big city. So, uh, the it, it's the narrative, the third person narrative, the covert narrator that lays the perspective from which we view the story or the unfolding life. Translation has to carry these dual voices, the voice of the character, as well as this covert voice of the speaker, of the narrator who makes the judgment or who induces us to make moral judgment on what is happening. Now, Akianon has a melodic quality, but that melodic quality disappears in the English translation. The seeming simplicity and guilelessness of Akianon's speech becomes merely terse in English. However, I hope that uh, people will still enjoy the story as Jan Barrios is reading them. Thank you. Thank you so much, Melly, and thank you so much, John, for reading that, uh, you know, excerpt of the story for us. Uh, uh, and uh, can we all, you know, uh, put our hands together for all, all our writers, translators, and editors, right, who actually participated at this launch today. Thank you so much, because it's really so wonderful to hear from this wonderfully talented, you know, group of uh, writers, you know, translators and editors, and you give us a little glimpse, you know, of the world that, uh, you know, you are actually writing about or translating from. So thank you so much for that, for actually giving us your time and your talents. And I also want to say a big thank you too to, you know, all our guests, all right, today. Uh, as I said at the very beginning, this is actually part of the second Saturday reading series. So we actually meet in this fashion uh, once every two, uh, once every month, all right, uh, bringing together writers from Asia as well as America actually to read their work and to field questions as well. It's unfortunate, of course, this time we didn't have enough uh, time for questions, uh, but perhaps, you know, once you've actually uh, purchased the book, uh, the link I've actually put in the chat for you, uh, you might actually, you know, uh, after reading the stories, so if you have a little more questions, you know, uh, that you'd like to ask the writers, we'd be very happy to put you in touch with the writers and translators. Uh, next month uh, for our reading series, uh, we are actually going to be uh, launching uh, Object Permanence uh, by the Filipino poet, uh, Filipina poet uh, Nika Bengzon, who is based in Manila. Uh, the book was the winner of the 2020 Gaudi Boy Poetry Book Prize, and it was selected by the Singaporean poet uh, Cyril Wong. And Cyril will be reading his poetry as well as introducing uh, Nika Bang Zong. So I hope uh, you will all uh, join us uh, for that uh, uh, exciting uh, reading. Uh, last thing, I just want to put a link uh, in the chat uh, where you can actually sign up for our newsletter, uh, which goes out every week, and you can be informed of uh, books such as the one that you've just heard from, as well as our events, as well as news about you know human rights and democracy which we are all, you know, are very passionate uh, in promoting and, uh, in our work. All right, thank you so much, everybody. Good night uh, or good morning to you, even calling in from good Philippines. I morning. hope that the stories will stay with you, all right, you know, for the rest of the evening or the rest of your day. Thank you so much for being you, with G. us. Thank you, everyone. Bye. Thank you, G. Thanks, everyone. Have a good weekend. Have a good weekend, everyone. Goodbye. Salamat, thank you. Salamat. Salamat.